tablet or ultrabook. It's the two-in-one from HP, so stay tuned for the unboxing and review. So guys, welcome to the unboxing of the HP X360. So, small box, it's only a small Ultrabook tablet device. So let's see what's, what we have inside the box. And we have the power cord. Oh, yellow inside, that looks pretty cool. Add a bit of spice to the design. Cardboard. I don't understand why HP and many of these manufacturers do not spend as much time on the packaging of their smaller devices, or their, shall we say, their budget devices, because first impressions is what counts. I mean, I just, okay, this is not an expensive device, but it just really feels like they spent about 50p on the box. Uh, the power brick, and then we have some styrofoam. Some people call this polystyrene. It's not, it's styrofoam. and more styrofoam and the device. We'll have a look at the device in a moment. I just wanna see what else we have here in terms of software. We have some contact details for HP. We have some more warranty and technical contact details. We're not gonna need that either. Setup instructions. Okay. Oh, it's got pictures on it. We've got some pictures in case we can't read. Thank you, HP. But we're not going to need that either. So that's gone. The device itself. Wow. Heavy. Apparently only weighs 1.4 kilograms. Feels a lot more than that. All right. Looks nice initially. It's got the same hinge as you find on the Lenovo Yoga, I believe. We haven't reviewed that on the channel, but we might get a chance to. Lenovo, hook me up. Yeah, it looks nice. Um, portable, light. So um, stay tuned and we'll cover what you can do and what you can't do. Specs, I.O., all of that. So while the machine is powering up, let's look around the machine a little closer. So on the left hand side of the machine here we have the power button, Kensington lock feature there, USB 2.0, SD card reader full size and the volume rocker and an LED for hard drive activity. You can't imagine how handy that is because a lot of the new devices, particularly tablets and stuff like that, don't have that. So when your machine kind of hangs up or something like that, you just don't know what it is doing. That's nice to have that. Looking on the right hand side of the device, it's a bit congested really. Um, power input, full size Ethernet for your Ethernet network, of course. Full size HDMI. And two, super fast USB. 3.0s and then we have a button with a windows icon on it which i have yet to try but we will i'm guessing that brings you back to the to the menu particularly when you're on tablet mode and then we have a 3.5 mil jack as well it looks really busy on that right hand side uh nothing else that i can tell if you look at it the actual design that it's not bad it's like the mold of the bottom of the device is the same one as you have on the xps 13 only that this is obviously plastic and the XPS 13 is carbon fiber. The screen, it's not very bright and looks tiny. In fact, it is quite small. It's only 1366 by 768, which basically means watching 1080p movies on that is a no-no because you just about have enough pixels for 720. Uh, it, it is touch sensitive, which is why you would buy this, so it's quite neat. And it's quite responsive as well in that sense. And guess what? We just find out what that key is there for. There we go, that key is on the right hand side is actually to bring you back to the desktop app. Brilliant. Let's look at the keyboard. 
Uh, actually, looking at the keyboard, it looks very similar to what you'll find on most of the XPS range, most of the HP, and so on and so forth. In fact, I actually, when I first looked at it, I thought it was almost identical to the same layout as the Surface. So maybe <laughs> they were sharing more information than we know. What I have noticed is the trackpad, although it's nice and large and does support multi inputs, it feels a bit loose when you're using it. I don't know whether this is this particular device that I have, but it feels a bit iffy. Also, we have some grommets on the actual front of it here so that you can actually see that when you flip the device upside down, as in, upside down, I mean as a tablet, and you place it on a table, it actually will not press any keys. Quite handy. Ergonomically, it feels really heavy. I know that specs say it's 1.4 kilos. It feels a lot heavier than that. The screen, in my opinion, is quite small. No thanks to the super big bezel that it has. Wow, I can't remember the last time I saw something like that. Actually, yes, probably on a Android tablet somewhere. Um, but yeah, so check out some of the shots, close-up shots of the machine and along with some specs, more specs, more benchmarks and stuff like that. So um, see you in a moment. for the conclusion of the HP X360. Uh, we were gonna run some benchmarks on share it with you guys, but it turns out actually that even though this has an SSD in it, the specifications aren't all to shout about, and given the audience that I think this is going to be suitable for, uh, the light user that this going to be doing mainly browsing, and maybe some light word processing, you're not gonna be doing any video editing at all, because I don't think the machine is up to it. Didn't think the, the benchmarks were all that relevant. However, my feelings about it is it's well built, uh, it's convenient because you've got the full functionality of a laptop and a touch screen. So yeah, it's a great device and as little as 450 pounds around there, so can't go wrong with that. So thank you, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you at the next one.